October 7th Alpha will start on August 27th. Our initial soft target. Yeah, it was the end of July. It was the 30th. So they're going to take an extra month. They're listening. You provided a ton of feedback already, and the team has been hard at work interpreting into integrating this. You should notice many improvements in the next Alpha weekend. The game will be at an Alpha state, but we need to start 24 7 testing so that we can thoroughly test and iterate on systems such as player progression and ranked. This really worried me. This really, really worried me. Like me personally, not for the game. Cause all the cat everyone casuals gonna have fun i would get so bored if i was going into playing five man squad casuals couldn't do it 24 7 testing is also necessary so we can identify and address any issues that arise along from long-term play all right we still expect to launch 24 7 closed beta later in 2024 and a full free-to-play open beta sometime in 2025 so what i'm reading here is hopefully this alpha is good that we're gonna have i'm guessing they're gonna have another alpha at the end of july or yeah july and if it's good this means a lot more money for them <laughs> which is it's smart they're doing everything right now because they've taken a step back but they're definitely like there is some business decision in here it's smart because people are gonna want to buy into this closed fucking alpha to play in like to play the game for six months before or what five months five six months before the beta i don't think there's gonna be ranked this weekend this is saying the 24 7 is going to test ranked we are thrilled to announce that smite 2 all right this is that's what they just said it's not for marketing the problem is it is marketing it's not for marketing but it is marketing wouldn't push the 24 7 so soon they want more info there's an issue with movement while strafing or turning aim sensitivity then i count for ah oh, they did it this is this is uh like i'm not usually the one that's like i'm gonna take credit but i'm taking fucking credit for this bro this was making me not like the game so if you didn't see any of me complaining during smite 2 stuff the field of view was wrong it was not directly ported from smite 1 i don't know why they didn't think of that in the first place but they fixed it so if you ever felt like things were off on your character, not the visuals, but like where your abilities were versus what you could see and all that stuff, it was wrong in Smite 2. It was not the same as Smite 1. Uh, so hopefully they fix this fully. I wish it was an exact port over, but I'm guessing it's just going to be better. Uh, we'll see if it's actually fixed. Hunter's animations for his pillar and impale felt slower, even though the timings were identical. We adjusted the animations and when FX appeared to better match the intended feel, Additionally, we used his projectiles as a test to address an overall feeling projectiles feeling slow. Yes. Wait, no. Even though we confirmed speeds match might one and two. Try him in three. Oh, uh, we did. Okay. Th yes. So his two felt terrible. A lot of abilities that traveled felt terrible. So I wonder what they had to do. Because they're basically saying times travel time is the exact same as Smite one, but it felt like it was in slow motion. Maybe the field of view changes that autos felt slower i think it might have been a field of view thing but uh, i mean they tweaked something it's weird that they didn't say what they tweaked which makes me think they just left out some key part from smite one they didn't transfer over uh based on feedback on honor we will be utilizing those lessons and tweaks and evaluating the existing run. oh so they only tweaked on her so far and then if we like it they're gonna do it to everybody and if we don't like it they're gonna tweak on her again and then do it to everybody it's wild because everyone I talked to couldn't elaborate on this. And I did my best to, and I, this is what they're doing. Like the things that they're doing were the things, the best way I could elaborate on the game feels bad. Uh, conquest gameplay and pacing was slow that, yeah, that was, that was true. Uh, jungle ball. Oh dude, the, the game, <laughs> there is going to be mass rage but also mass enjoyment at the same time, by the way. So jungle balls drop off the first camp. Now there's no more building up camps to get drops. You can stack jungle buffs. This scares me, but it's also exciting as a jungler. I want every buff as a jungler. I also know everybody else is going to take all my buffs. I, I can already see my mid laner. I'm like, Hey, let's do red. And they pick up red and then they accidentally pick up speed somehow, even though you can't stack them. Like you can't group the buffs. You can stack the buffs. You can't group them up on the map. Uh, early smite one, you could stack buffs, but that was like before jungling was a thing. Like that was when lane was two, one, two. It there was no, you know, there was no j set jungler at that point in time. If I'm remembering correctly.
Our base health has been reduced by 25%, so we'll die faster. Per level health protections remain the same as Smite 2 is already lower. Okay. We're discussing adding additional objectives to the map and or adjusting the rewards. Yeah. It's kind of weird that they didn't replace the pyro with anything to me. There's also a lot of open map space. I wonder if they've tested putting a major camp off to the sides of the lanes instead of them being tailored around the middle of the jungles. We're evaluating the economy curve, the game, and we'll likely adjust the speed at which players obtain items. Okay. Oh, this was interesting. I saw people arguing about this. Dude, in Smite 2, you couldn't, like, two man in Gold Fury was impossible. Objectives were not super easy in Smite 2 if you were oh, at, like, an even level with everybody in the game. Do we still have to manually pick up buffs? I don't see anything where they said they took it away. So, you know, we'll see. Um, controller support on Smite 1 had a lot of features that we did not bring over for the early alpha test. So we had significant effort. We made a significant effort to improve this for alpha 3. Aiming on console, restricted or otherwise, has specific curves that define how quickly or slowly aiming accelerates. So there's aim acceleration on controller. I never realized that. These were way off in the first alphas. Okay, so they tweaked it. This will also improve the feel of restricted camera pitch on keyboard and mouse. You should have this off, bro. We adjusted how characters feel to turn strafe. We adjusted scaling on the ground. Okay. Yeah, this is what people are angry about. The new active item system is unfriendly to console keybinds, is what people are saying. We've tried to balance active passive items, so the active items are not required. Uh, they elaborated for fully like further on this. They basically want new players to not feel the pressure of having to buy active items and then learn more keybinds. Uh, they definitely did not word it like this here. Like they, they, they basically, they worded it like, Hey, console players, you suck. So, uh, we hope you don't have to build active items. Are they wrong? I don't know. You guys tell me this is bad. This is not good for the overall game. You should have strong items and filler items and situational items and your active items should fall into those categories there's no reason for there not to be a very strong active item that is necessary for you know mages to have or junglers to have you know what i mean like it makes no sense the active items are a big selling point on smite 2 making sense by the way because it wasn't possible in smite 1 so for you to take a step back on this is kind of like i, I don't think that's the right direction I think it makes far more sense to dive further into this and just make keybinds easier for controller players. Uh, the new active item system is difficult to use. What? Okay. So this is from the casual players. Uh, like hyper. This hat. Like, do you guys feel this way? I'm not talking about my GM players. Like those of you who play a little bit of ranked every now and then. You play casuals. You play assault. You play arena. If you played Smite Two, did the active item system was it difficult to use or were you not remembering to use it because those are two different things and i feel like they probably got a lot of feedback it's difficult to use them but you need to reprogram your bane, bane that they exist all right everyone's yeah, it, that's this is just them taking feedback from your like hyper casuals bro your non-gamers who are playing a game yeah not remembering is that's a repetition thing you play the game enough you'll eventually use it once in a game and the next game you'll use it twice and the next game you'll use it every time that that literally happened to me i kept forgetting you guys watched i kept forgetting we believe the new active item system will benefit both high level players and casual players yeah because it'll make the game more fun bro high level players are able to use active items at the right moment yep new players can opt out yep players can slowly ramp up complexity okay then the core issue currently is more perception based yes Oh, okay. So they get it. The new, I, I don't get this. This is also like a casual thing. A lot of you guys said this though. I think this is more of frustration with being a new shop and you're not comfortable with it. And instead of saying, Hey, I need to take the time to learn the new shop and the new items and learn, like go ask for builds and find builds for people. You say, this is difficult and I don't know where anything is. Uh, I think if a lot more people just looked inward, things like this wouldn't get said. The new strength and intelligence split is confusing or isn't implemented from Smite 1. Or isn't an improvement. Okay. So 
to jump back most of this that they're talking about especially this stuff they're trying to make the game easier for new players and for casual players they've always been doing that they they definitely cater some to the you know the high level players but that's always a goal to bring in that'll you know make them more money this definitely goes against that so this is them trying to make the game more I don't know the word more variety in the game this this attributes to way more variety in the game so that means more play hours that means more unlimited options because you have different builds different items different gods it's, it's unlimited eventually once they have enough gods in the game i agree it is hard to understand and it's confusing to understand but that's why you're supposed to learn and there's tons of ways to learn you watch people that are good at the game and understand it. You watch videos that explain it. You read and and articulate yourself. And if you can't do that, you ask somebody who can, who's you know around you. It's definitely more confusing, but it's not like high level intelligence here. How do you spectate private matches? They have to be spectated either live match and you do slash spectate space the person's name or it has to have a master's level player in it for it to be saved and it only be saved to the next patch i like the way you, he just said uh strength it gives you each god their own meta build more than smite one that's a way better way to look at it because a lot of people look at it like there's countless number one top builds no build will be the best you are mistaken if you think because they changed strength and intellect like made it you know intelligence work differently um no there is going to be a, like he said, a hyper specific build for each God now, rather than X build works on every single God. It might be this build works on these three assassins the best. And then this build you change to this item and it works on these three the best. It's not going to be, Hey, let's build fucking Polly on, on her every, like that's not going to fucking happen. That is a delusional world. You might go do it and get shit on, but if you're trying to be good, there's going to be a build. That you're going to run and it's going to be more unique than smite one for sure the new pace of new, the pace of new content is slow okay this was concerning like we're definitely judging them pretty hard on this but i think they kind of stepped it up but it, it's kind of weird to me man how do we go from no new gods and akate still not being ready to like three new gods one of them being Thanatos out of nowhere. Like, like, do they have these gods ready to go and they're not telling us? I don't know why they would do that, but we went from none to three real quick as soon as we said, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, our intent is to ship three ported gods in each alpha update, releasing weekly within that update. Example, in a four week update, a new god will release during each week of the first three weeks. You'll also be shipping all new gods like Hikate every few months. This is very, very uh, open, not very specific. 24 7 Alpha will have Arena, Ranked Conquest, Ascension Passes, and God Master Progression Rewards. So, this I'm assuming is going to carry over then. Voice chat a lot more, which is subject to change. This is fucking real as fuck, by the way. I didn't even really complain too much about this, but this is very fucking true. There is a lot of noise and visuals and where the numbers were placed before just made this so fucking true.